Thank you for joining us today. My name is Andrea McEwen Henderson, and I will be your host today. I am one of the national account managers with College Recruiter. Today, we will be speaking with Nicolette Jackson, National Account Manager for Consumer Marketing here at College Recruiter. We're going to be discussing why email marketing is still the most effective way to reach qualified candidates. College Recruiter is the leading niche job board used by recent college graduates to find entry-level jobs and students to find internships. College Recruiter is used by recent grads and students of every one, two, and four-year college and graduate school in the U.S. So again, Nicolette, thank you so much for joining us today. So let's jump right in. I know I'm real curious, how relevant to today's digital marketing is the practice of email engagement with prospective customers? Thank you. Hi, Andrea. Well, you know, it's extremely relevant. A recent report by Forrester Research stated that for every dollar spent on email marketing, the average return is over $44. That's a very successful return by any standards. Um, and unfortunately, email marketing has also suffered a lot of bad publicity over the years, mostly due to sleazy data aggregation practices and you know, list resale abuse, which have resulted in heightened anti-spamming regulations by many internet service providers. However, we do know that, you know, firsthand, of course, at College Recruiter, that when done right, uh, email campaigns can be a very powerful tool for most marketers. So how do marketers, so you're talking about it being it a powerful tool, how do marketers know a good contact list when they see one? Also a good question. Well, if you haven't built your own database of contacts, then it's really important to understand that you're actually not going to come across a high quality email list for sale or that is to say for purchase. Uh, what I mean by that is that if the actual email addresses are available to you, then those same email addresses have obviously been bombarded by other people over and over and over again. So what, you have, you know, what you've done is you've actually purchased a list that provides you leads that are dead in the water. Um, Secondly, what you want is a list that is at least opt-in, quite frankly, at best double opt-in, um, and that means that these people have requested to receive the information from the list owner directly, even possibly its content partners, and they've requested this t not just once, but twice. So that's a very important consideration. Okay, a double opt-in list. Double so, opt-in. Okay. So what are some of the elements of a successful email campaign? Um, well, in terms of key elements, I think... I would say first a responsive design. I mean, there, there are many different types of messages and calls to action that make up the foundation of a good you know, campaign. But I think that marketers need to make sure that they're crafting content that clearly communicates across all devices. I mean, 68% of millennials today touch two different devices per day. 30% are actually touching four devices per day. You know, so, I mean, what does that mean? For example, you've got a 22-year-old girl who, um, you know, expects to transition from seeing an email offer on her laptop, you know, that came through her Gmail account, for example. She wants to be able to take that, you know, to the store, and she'll do that via her iPhone, and she'll pull that email up on her smartphone, and then she'll scan the discount or coupon code directly with the store. So no matter how you choose to craft your message, I think the main body of your email needs to be easily digestible and instantly relevant to the person you're reading it. And for, you know, for the millennial generation, that, that means mobile, definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what about the subject line? Isn't that like important when distinguishing what might be construed spam or not? Well, I mean, absolutely. You know, um, working with, adult, you know, with an opt-in list certainly reduces the risks there, but there's no getting around how effective email service providers have gotten in helping their users organize their inbox. You know, we see it with Gmail. Um, so if you keep your subject line short and snappy, I would say don't use capital letters or exc exclamation marks, then you're already preventing a lot of unnecessary red flags. Um, subject line, which are direct and, you know, they should encourage an emotional response or reaction from the reader would be great. Those are especially powerful. Um, and try to make them as individually relevant as you can make them. You know, if you're targeting a certain niche audience, really try to appeal uh, to that audience and who they are. I would say that's extremely important. Good. Good. Um, we hear the word segmentation a lot. What does that really mean? Well, segmentation is, is really all about reaching your core audience in a very granular way. So it really boils down to knowing who your ideal customer is, right, and emailing only those qualified customers. So a good email campaign will probably be able to showcase your message directly to your choice audience in a way that most digital and even non-digital marketing solutions cannot. 
let's say you only want to reach recent graduates with a bachelor's degree of science and you want, you know, you only want to hit five specific schools in your area because you want to promote your MBA program. Well, segmentation does that. It's really about hyper-targeting your audience. And isn't timing a fundamental factor, you know, when you're trying to do some effective planning for a campaign? Yes. Um, and that ties back into knowing who your audience is. Basically, you know, your, their schedule, the time of day, they're most likely to read their email, you know, what season is it? <laughs> um, you know, all of that is relevant to what you're offering. So you have to make a conscious choice that reflects who you're engaging. If you are not so time specific, then I would stick to the tried and true Tuesdays and Wednesday midday blasts. Um, those seem to get the highest open and response rates for the majority of different types of email campaigns. Great. And my last question for you is, how do you measure the success of an email campaign? Well, you know, being able to track your email marketing efforts through many different analytics schools um, allows you to understand, you know, what works and what doesn't. So you can prove your targeting and your messaging. Um, if you have the ability to do so, I would consider sending out an A-B test, you know, to two different sub-segments of your email list to see which one is more successful. And then you can focus your campaign accordingly. Um, you know, make sure your call to action directs a click. Um, otherwise, you know, have an offline tracking method, such as a promo code that's specifically tied to that campaign. And a lot of my clients are actually creating separate landing pages, um, and those are related specifically to the email blast, and that works really well. Uh, and then it certainly provides greater accountability. Um, but, you know, I, I also would like to mention something here, Andre, if, if I might, if we have time. Um, you know, the medium of, that is email campaigning is so granular um, and users' actions can be so minutely tracked that there's this expectation that the lead to conversion ratio for email campaigns should be much higher compared to other advertising mediums. But what I think marketers forget is that at its essence, it's you know, simply a very powerful lead generation tool. Um, even if you could precisely measure when a specific type of driver, for example, looks at a billboard or when you're, you know, a qualified lead spends a few more seconds reading your ad on a, in a magazine, you know, um, can you really guarantee an immediate correlated response? You know, you can't, right? So I might read an email I got from Travelocity, say, um, about a special airfare deal, and then I'll remember that deal a few deal, you know, just a few days later, or a week later, and I have the choice to either go back to that email if I've saved it, or if it's just, you know, sitting in my inbox, uh, or I might remember that it was Travelocity, and I'll go directly to their website, right? So, you know, it might take me a week. I might go back six months from now. Um, it's really hard to pinpoint the journey that your lead is going to take to go from product awareness or promotion awareness um, to actual buy. Um, and it could be six months from now, you know. So as with all advertising, I think repetition is key. Um, I think you want to keep emphasizing your message um, and what you have to offer so that you're building momentum and you're establishing your brand, you know. Good stuff, Nicolette. Thank you so much for joining us and just giving us some more insight into why email marketing is still the most effective way to reach qualified candidates. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.